Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you can tell by the title, today I'll be filming one of the most requested videos that I've ever gotten on this channel, which is my fitness journey. Um, and I do want to start off by saying that I have tried to film this video like multiple times in the past, um, and I just end up not loving it. It's either like too long, too short, too detailed, not enough detailed. I've tried like writing things out and kind of going by that, but it just, I end up editing it and then I don't love it myself. I can't even get through it, so I don't want to put those kind of videos out but I have recently posted a picture on Instagram it was a transformation picture and so many people reached out to me asking me if I could make this video a lot of people assumed that I was just skinny when I was growing up and then once I got into fitness I was uh, my goal was to build muscle but I actually started off the complete opposite I was quite overweight um, and that is where we're going to start this video. So I'm going to go straight from my memory, from my heart. I don't have anything written out. I'm just going to make this video like more of a story um, from things that I remember and everything that I went through. So if it's not super organized, if I miss a few things, just forgive me, but I just really want to get this video out there for anyone who um, is, or is or was in the same position that I am today or was back then. Anyway, for anyone who can relate to this video um, and maybe someone can find it helpful or motivational, inspirational, um, hopefully I'm able to help at least a few people with this video. So I'm going to take you guys back to my childhood. I never had issues with appetite. I would always finish like my friend's food at school. My parents always tell me that I had zero problems eating. I also grew up in Ukraine up until the age of 10, which is when I moved here, but um, I grew up with my grandparents who absolutely loved to feed me. It was like their favorite thing to do. So I was always on the chubbier side when I was a kid. And then I moved to the United States when I was 10 years old. Um, and that is when I was introduced to McDonald's and like all the fast food chain restaurants, which was so new and different to me. I don't know if I have any pictures from like back then. I think they're all at my mom's house in Chicago, but if I do have some, I will throw them on the screen for you guys and I will continue doing that throughout this video um, just so you guys can get a perspective of like what I looked like and stuff. Uh, but where was I saying? Oh, I was talking about McDonald's. So that was my guilty pleasure um, because I moved to the US and I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't really speak English all that well. Uh, food became a comfort to me and I would always like bug my parents, just please can we go to McDonald's? I just want, you know, the burgers and the french fries and all that stuff. It would just make me feel good. Um, and that kind of helped me cope with my situation at that time, which was wanting to move back. I was not happy to be in the United States. Um, I was missing my friends, my family, people who I grew up with, and it was really difficult. A lot of you might be a little bit confused. I have made a video before talking um, about my move to the United States and why I lived with my grandparents and stuff up until the age of 10, so I will have that link down below so you could watch it. But basically growing up, I did not eat healthy. I did not have any desire to eat healthy. Now moving on to like middle school. So um, at that point, I had already kind of learned English. I had made friends uh, my mom wanted me to go do swimming and stuff like that and you know I was like okay I'll do it just because I had nothing better to do and my friends were doing it so I was like let's just do it that made me lose a little bit of weight and um, because my energy expenditure was going up I was always busy we weren't eating as much because of all those factors in middle school I did uh, lose a little bit of weight that I had before from you know, my emotional eating problems. Um, my cat is currently pooping, so we're gonna take a second to let him do his thing. I apologize. Anyway, moving on. So, I get into high school. I really vividly remember a lot of the things that happened in high school, um, and I feel like this is where I'm gonna be able to actually go into detail of things. Freshman year, I joined the swim team. Um, I also joined the water polo team. I was really active. I was eating crap food, like, you know, pizza and <laughs> cookies at lunch with these amazing cookies. They actually said that they put mayo in them and that's why they were so good in the cafeteria. I loved that stuff. Um, and even though I was on the swim team and on the water polo team, I was just, I loved food. Like, my love for food grew so much. And I think entering high school and because people started forming cliques and different friend groups and stuff, I wasn't able to like figure myself out. I wasn't sure where I fit in exactly. I had a few good friends, but I still didn't feel like I belonged. Um, and once again, I turned to food for comfort because it was always something in my life that I knew would make me feel good. And that whole year I would continue to eat the exact same way. Uh, my mom would pack me like healthy lunches and I would just 
throw that away and eat my pizza or if they were having Panda Express or those cookies that I just talked about. That would basically make up my entire diet and then I would go home um, and usually I would actually come home after practice and I would be starving so I would just have like anything I could find in my fridge, you know, spaghetti or sandwiches or whatever. I would make it all. So then I would say sophomore year was pretty similar to freshman year, nothing really changed, but um, my parents started to get a little bit concerned. My mom would take me to the doctor and they would always tell me that my cholesterol is too high. That was one thing I remember like through my entire high school. My mom is a nurse, my dad is um, a doctor, he's a family physician right now. And they were really worried about me because they knew that like once you form these kind of habits, it's really hard to break them. So they would always, always like make comments and my mom would try and like make me eat healthy food and pack me healthy lunches and make me healthy breakfast. I remember feeling so like mad about that. I was just like, leave me alone. I'm in high school, like don't try to control what I eat. And that would make me almost like lash out even more because like anytime she'd make me anything healthy, I would just like throw it to the side or throw it away or not want to eat it. And I would always go for something else. So in a way it made me like resent them and resent the idea of eating healthy even more. And that is how <laughs> sophomore year went by. Now, junior year, um, the beginning of junior year, I remember it is when I was at my heaviest. I think I was, well, I was 5'5", five five, first of all, that was my height, and my weight was around 160 pounds, um, or like 158, 260 pounds. Now, I remember really, really vividly that at the beginning of my junior year, I tried hard to lose weight and I would you know do those typical diets like the diets that I would find on Instagram or Pinterest you know the eat like a cucumber and an egg a day or crazy stuff like that and that never lasted it never lasted longer than like I don't know a week and I just felt so uncomfortable in my own body it was also junior year when you have really good looking friends and it just makes you super hyper aware of like what you look like and it's an unfortunate thing but it it really is and you know it was very difficult for me to like walk up a flight of stairs um i wanted to i don't remember if i quit the swim team at that point or if i didn't i was still doing water polo because i really loved it but um swimming was super hard for me like i just i could never move up to varsity in that because my endurance was just bad and i did not feel good at all like i would always feel sluggish and like i wanted to sleep all the time i would have that like huge lunch the pizza and the cookies and the chips or whatever and then i would literally be like falling asleep in class um so that was why i tried so many different diets i would just kind of start research them online and be like okay this is what i'm doing today the grapefruit diet you know we just eat grapefruit and not in any way sustainable but i would try them all nothing was working i would just give up after a week or two or even three and because i didn't see progress and because it was awful i would feel awful like i'd be hungry all the time and i was like i'm not doing this to myself so at this point i'm and i were already dating and um, in high school, as you guys know, there's like homecoming dances and turnabout and then you have prom um, And I remember it was turnabout time I had this like green dress that I absolutely loved or I loved online And then I you know wore it and I didn't feel comfortable in it So I came home from the dance and I was like, you know what prom is soon It was like a couple months after that and I was like I am going to make it my goal to lose this weight to commit to a healthier lifestyle and that's it like it was like the next day I woke up I ended up going to the gym it was my first time going to the gym like in the longest time ever I ran on the treadmill for like 30 minutes and I did some abs at that point I was like also following a bunch of like fitness accounts not not any fitness accounts that I would ever recommend to follow it was like you know do 30 crunches every time you eat something kind of thing but either way you know it gave me exercise ideas in my head and I knew that I had to do cardio in order to lose weight so that was my plan after that workout I vividly remember like going to the grocery store and getting a bunch of fruits uh, Greek yogurt oatmeal this is where things get a little bit interesting because I did not have a very you know like straightforward like good start to my fitness journey it was super rocky and I'm gonna tell you guys why I wanted to lose the weight I had like a couple months until prom I was so determined I was like that's it I'm going cold turkey I'm not gonna have any more pizza or cookies or pancakes or chocolate or anything that I even remotely like wanted um, I literally just one day woke up and was like no that's it my diet consisted of like I would have oatmeal with Greek yogurt for breakfast like plain Greek yogurt plain plain oatmeal blueberries and that would be it I would go to the gym for an hour I would literally run for an hour I would not let myself stop whether I was 
not feeling good, if I was tired, whatever. And then I would do abs afterwards. And that was like my whole workout every single day. Nothing ever changed. I would eat, you know, tilapia or ground chicken and salad. And I wouldn't have a lot of carbs. Um, it was mostly like a very protein filled diet. I was basically eating like a bro, but in even like a worse way, in my opinion. That lasted a few months and I saw changes happening. And I like, it sucks that I'm gonna say this, but I, I did see changes happening really quickly, but I do not. I repeat, I do not recommend anyone to do this um, because I became extremely, extremely obsessed with it. Like, it was everything. I, I saw the changes happening. And I was like, oh my God, I'm finally losing weight. Like, it's paying off. It's working. And my clothes started to fit better. And like, I, I felt like I was looking better. And I would look in the mirror and I wouldn't feel as uncomfortable. And I would start getting compliments from my family members and my friends. Like, oh my God, you're losing so much weight. You look great. So I went from being like 100 and... Like I said, like 60-ish pounds to 130 pounds really quickly within a couple of months. It was kind of just feeding my obsession because everyone would say that I looked better. I would see it in the mirror. I would see it in my clothes. I would see it on the scale. And I was like, oh my god, I just have to continue. I have to see how much lower I can go. I don't want to stop getting these compliments. I don't want to stop having this feeling of like just being happy with like the way I looked. And then there was some sort of holiday. I don't know if it was... I don't know, maybe it was a birthday or something, but we went to my mom's um, really close friend's house. We came there, it was like pizza and little like cheese snacks and basically nothing healthy there at all. So um, it was very, it's very disrespectful in Ukrainian culture to not eat something that someone else is like giving you, um, especially if they take the time to, my, my cat is pooping, I'm sorry. Anyway, I apologize for the noise, but it's very disrespectful to say no to food and like people usually like you just don't say no like you just they put it on your plate and you eat it and that's it <laughs> in like european cultures and i think a lot of you guys are probably from europe so you can relate um so i had to eat the pizza i had to eat the cheese like there was just no get going around it like it wasn't like at my own house where i could just make my own food or like say no to my parents if they were making something so i had the food i remember like just right away feeling this awful guilt like how could you do that you are going to gain 30 pounds all this progress and all this work that you're putting in is just going straight to the garbage basically because of one little teeny tiny slice of pizza and like three cheese pieces with crackers like crazy thinking but i remember this so well i asked my mom i was like can i have the car keys i'm gonna go home i'm gonna do whatever like i didn't tell her what i was actually going to do but i'm like i need to go home i'll pick you guys up later she was like yeah sure go home I went home, I ran into my house, I really quickly changed into my gym outfit, and I went straight to the gym. And I was like, okay, I need to burn all this off. Even though that same morning I had already worked out, <laughs> sorry, I had already worked out, I already did, you know, my set one hour of cardio and abs thing, I was like, but I need to burn all this pizza off. So I start running on the treadmill. I don't know if you guys have ever like ate a lot of food and then tried to do some sort of exercise, like you don't feel really well. And I was like, you know, I'm pushing through it. This is a punishment that I deserve to have for eating that pizza, that one slice of pizza or whatever else I had. Um, and it was like 20 minutes into me being on the treadmill, I felt so sick, so sick. And I was like, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And then like, I just felt this like nausea coming up and I had maybe two seconds to run to the bathroom and I just threw up everywhere and after i threw up most people you know after you throw up you probably go home because obviously something's not right i threw up i washed my mouth wiped my face and i literally went back on the treadmill and i was like i'm finishing these 30 minutes because i still ate the pizza and this is like a punishment that i deserve to have i look back on that now and i'm like what was i thinking i was literally being so awful to my body and and i just didn't I didn't have a care in the world because all that I wanted so badly, the only goal that I wanted was just continue seeing the scale change, continue getting the compliments, continue seeing progress in the mirror. That was like literally all that mattered to me. So that went on for a couple more months. Um, I remember getting down to like 120 pounds and my mom was like, girl, you are looking really thin you are never eating with us like i would never eat dinner with my parents it was like my worst nightmare i would always come up with some sort of excuse i always wanted to make my own dinner that way i knew exactly what was going into it um there was no added oils like i never ate out with my friends ever or when i almost never went out to eat like i don't 
we would have dates like at his house that way I could cook my own food. However, the way that our bodies work, um, if you restrict yourself for a really long time, at some point your body's going to say, I've had enough, I'm craving the food that everyone around you is eating, the food that you see every day, but you just keep telling yourself, no, you can't have it. At some point, your body's gonna say, no, I want it. So, I got to that point. <laughs> I remember just one day, I was like, you know, I'm just going to have some pancakes with chocolate chips. Like, it was like some Sunday morning, and I decided I was ready. I, I deserved it. So I had a couple pancakes, and then 30 minutes went by, and I was like, ooh, those are really good. I want more. So I had more pancakes, and more pancakes, and all of a sudden, I was basically out of the whole box of pancake mix. And I remember feeling so shitty after that. I was like, why did I just do that? Why did I just eat all this food? Like, I could not mentally understand why my body was okay with that. I hope that not a lot of you guys are who are watching this video have struggled with binge eating, but it's a feeling that I cannot describe. It's a, it's like someone, it's like you step out of your body and you're watching someone else control you. And then all of a sudden you snap out of it and you're like, what just happened? Why did I just eat all that? And I, that's like the best way I can describe it because when you're doing it, it feels so good and like you just want more and more and more and you don't think of the consequences. You don't think of how you're going to feel after. All that you're thinking about is how good this food is and how much you want it. That happened once and then I was like, okay, that's it. I'm back on track. I'm just forget about it. You know, it's fine. I'm going to go to the gym. You know, we're going to continue eating the food that I'm eating and this is never going to happen again. Next Sunday came around and I bought more pancake mix and it, it happened again. And then it happened again and again and again. And at that point, I didn't know that I had developed like a binge eating disorder, but I definitely, looking back at it now, like I 100% had a binge eating disorder. If you're going to get anything out of this video, it's just don't restrict yourself to the point of, of having such an awful relationship with food. I would have planned binge eating days, like days where I would tell myself, okay, I'm going to be really healthy and eat very little for like this entire week and then on Sunday I just eat everything and I would literally eat everything. Cheese with like salami at night and nuts and and like any like little chocolates that I would find around the house and the pancakes and like the pancakes so I, I just really vividly remember like the pancakes were an issue for me. Um, and basically like anything and even things that I wouldn't crave or wouldn't want if if I was in an episode of binging like I would eat them still. I would eat anything. Um, and it was crazy because like looking back at it now, I would never ever do it in public. Like I would still in public say no to all the foods. It would always be in private. It was something that I was so embarrassed about. I knew something was wrong. Like I knew that that was not like a good way to live and, and that awful feeling that I would feel afterwards. Like it could have at some point led me to something worse, which would have been like, you know, bulimia or, or I don't know, people take laxatives. There's like, I don't even want to say it because I don't want someone to like, get an idea and I just said it, but you know, it could have led to something worse. Recovering from those things because they are so hard on your body physically, like bulimia and laxative abuse and whatever else exists, like it's really difficult to get out of that and it could impact you for the rest of your life. And I knew that I did not want to go down that path. I already felt like awful enough. So I opened up to Omar about it and I also opened up to my mom about it. I honestly remember this like release of just like telling someone and not keeping it inside my head i instantly felt better and not like better as in like oh it all of a sudden just went away because it it didn't for a long time but i i felt better and i would recommend everyone to talk to a professional i never ever think that you should deal with something like this on your own talk to someone at least but i felt like i wasn't deep enough to the point of no return that i could have still like get this under control um with just the help of my family and those around me my friends my loved ones and um, that was like my first step. So I remember I was still really obsessed with exercise at that point um, And I was still doing like my hour of cardio, but it was just so exhausting all the time Like I literally had to force myself to do it and I felt like I needed a different goal a different Fitness routine a different something in order to just like Try and focus on something else rather than weight loss because I knew that that was the root of all evil for me personally Like that was the cause of my issues with eating and with food. Omar got into fitness then and he was following like Christian Guzman and He found Nikki Blackadder and that's like when I was introduced to the world of weightlifting and I was like, oh my god there's all of these girls who just look so amazing and they were talking about eating more instead of eating less and getting stronger instead of trying to get smaller and 
that was crazy to me. Like I was like, this is just a whole new world. And it was so exciting. I started reading bodybuilding.com, simplyshredded.com. They all had tons of like free workout programs, which they still do. I always get questions of people asking like, if I can't pay for a coach or if I can't buy this, you know, challenge or whatever. Like those are such good resources. They have tons and tons of free programs on there that you could use with all the reps, all the sets, all the days right now for you, all the exercises. Those are great. And that's how I got into weightlifting. I started watching YouTube videos of people who were lifting. Um, I was watching Nikki at that point. I was like obsessed. I was such a fangirl. Um, I still absolutely love her to death. And it's like crazy to me that we're like friends now in real life. I was so inspired by all these people. And um, slowly I started to, you know, lower the amount of cardio that I was doing. I was so intimidated the first time that I went to the gym, you guys, like to the weightlifting section. I literally cried. I, I bawled my eyes out in the bathroom and I came back and I went back in the Stairmaster and Omar was like, you're okay, like you can do this. And I was like, I cannot do this. I'm never going to lift. Like I just felt so uncomfortable. Like I didn't belong there for some weird reason. Like you guys, you belong there. Put your headphones on, put a hat on, have your program in front of you and just do the thing. And I promise you guys, like one day I was just like, just screw it. Like I, I just hid myself. I almost like put a hood on and I just did the workout and I was like, oh my God, I feel so good. So having a plan in front of you helps, having a hat on helps, music helps, and just remember that everyone's at the gym to focus on themselves and to better themselves. They are not looking at you. Like I don't ever look at anyone at the gym and I always, when I was like staring at it, I always think like, oh my God, people are staring at me. I'm probably doing something wrong. If you're doing something wrong, so what? You're in there bettering yourself and everyone else is too. And I promise you, no one cares what you're doing. But I know that little voice inside is always like, but they're probably judging you. And like, if someone's judging you, that's their own issue. That is my advice for beginners. I think I just went off on a tangent, but I just like wanted to tell you guys that like the first time I went to the gym, I was so scared. So Nikki Blackadder was back then tracking macros and I was like, okay, this is what I need to do. I need to track macros and you know, my issues with food will go away. I'm not going to view food as healthy and unhealthy or things I can't eat, I can't eat. If it's macros for me was what I thought was going to be like a way to incorporate the foods that I liked into my diet, just in smaller amounts. Um, and I thought that that was going to like fix my binge eating disorder. Um, in a way, I don't, I don't want to say that it did because I don't think it did, but in a way it kind of masked it because I would be like, okay, like I can still have this one slice of pizza, even though I would still crave it afterwards. I would, for the most part, not allow myself to have it because I would just want to hit my macros. And I think this is where macros, once again, come back and still bite you in the ass because you're still viewing food as numbers and you're not actually fixing your relationship with food. You're just, if you already had a bad relationship with food, like if you had binge eating, I don't think you should jump into macros. I think you should work on healing the way that you view food and the way that it makes you feel. Just really listening to your body, feeding it healthy foods, but also like you crave things, like people crave things. I love chocolate. So for me, the best thing that I could have done for myself was just to have, you know, a chocolate bar or two even, but just stop right there, honor the craving, satisfy the craving and then move on. But instead, I just kind of went from like one issue to the next. I just, instead of viewing food as things I can't have or can have, I would just view it as numbers. Like, okay, if it fits in my numbers, I could have it. Um, and then you can't really unsee that. I always like say this with macros, like once you understand, and although I think to an extent people should know like what they're eating, once you see food as numbers, it's really hard to unsee it as numbers. Like you're going to see, oh, this English muffin has 28 grams of carbs and two grams of fat and five grams of protein, just for an example. And like, you're always going to know that, you know, like you cannot unknow that. So that can become really difficult. Now I'm not like bashing on macros because I know that it can work for a lot of people. If you're contest prepping, if you have very specific fitness goals that you want to reach and you know, dates that you want to reach them by, then it can be a very good method, um, especially for someone who doesn't struggle with food issues. But I think a lot of people are actually going to be able to relate to my video, unfortunately. So, um, you have to be really careful with macros. I can't tell you guys what you should or shouldn't do, but this is just my personal experience. My binge eating would slow down a little bit, but I would still have days where I could not control myself around food. Um, they were not as often, and I didn't feel as like out of control with my own self, but it still happened. I still did not like heal my relationship with food, which is what I should have done in the first place. All right, so about two to three years go by, I had gained some weight back because obviously I wasn't doing a crazy amount of cardio as I was before. I was probably weighing in at about 128 pounds, 130 pounds around there, which is what I'm still maintaining right now. I started to not track my macros so precisely and I decided that I needed to just take a break from all the numbers, from 
all the concentration on food. I wanted to like have a few days during the week where I didn't track and then have a few days where I did track and then kind of like wing myself off of tracking macros overall. I just knew that that wasn't something that I wanted to follow for the rest of my life. Like I wanted to travel and and just be able to live without constantly thinking of food as numbers and not focusing so much on it. So I decided a few days a week I would go about it that way and then kind of move on from there. And that was actually a really good way for me to come off of macros, like for me personally to do it because it wasn't like, I, it, I didn't feel like I lost all of the control right away, but um, it was a good way to realize that if I listen to my body, it will tell me exactly how much I need to eat and it's not going to let me down as long as I listen to it instead of trying to control it. Listening to your body, in my opinion, is more than just eating whatever you want. I think it's paying attention to how your digestive system runs, how your skin is, do you feel sluggish, do you feel tired? I think things like that get really overlooked when people say like, just listen to your body. Like you have to pay attention to the physical signs as well as like the mental ones. Um, and that is actually why I post so many full days of eatings on this channel because I wanna show you guys the way that I truly eat, that I don't restrict myself anymore. I allow myself to have the things that I wanna have and I'll still get comments to this day like, oh, you eat so much processed food, but I'm trying, I'm not perfect. I'm still on this fitness journey. This is like an ongoing process, it's a lifestyle. I would say that the last time that I binged was probably like a good year and a half ago. Yeah, I would say like a year and a half ago. Um, I have not binged since then. I definitely have days where I overeat, but a lot of people confuse overeating with binging and they'll just be like, oh, I binged. Like, no, binging is a totally different feeling and scenario. Like when I'm overeating, I can stop myself and I'll be like, oh, I'm really full right now. When I'm overeating, I can stop myself and I'll be like, oh, I'm really full right now. There's this cooking in front of me. I don't want it right now. I'll eat it tomorrow. Versus when I was binging, it'd be like, I'm stuffed to the point of no return, but this cookie is in front of me and I need to eat it because I probably won't be able to eat it tomorrow. Something that I wish I had known before I got into my fitness journey is that no physical goal will ever be worth giving up your mental state and going down this road that I went on. Like, it could have all been prevented if I had just wanted to actually become healthier and improve my life instead of having it such be like an artificial, not an artificial, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but such like non-fulfilling goal, I guess, a non-fulfilling goal of wanting to look a certain way because that led me down a really bad path. So it could have been prevented if I had just different goals, if I had different views, if I had just approached this in a more balanced way of saying, okay, let me just work out, you know, three times a week and do some cardio, maybe a little bit of weights, um, not cut out all the food that I'm craving, but I obviously did it in a different way of just cold turkey and I think that's when everything kind of started. So um, my advice for anyone who is a beginner is to always, always just start out small, make achievable goals, things that you can celebrate, things that will make you feel good instead of, you know, like going off the scale or how you look or the compliments that you're receiving. Just really tracking your fitness journey by how you feel, the energy that you have, the way that your body is running, the mental stability that you have. I think all those things are so important. Always, always get overlooked. But I'm going to end this video here. I have a feeling that it was so long. Um, so I apologize for that. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If I had not started my fitness journey, I would not be where I am today. I would not be able to help people as I'm able to today. So at the end of the day, I'm very, very grateful. And I love you guys with all my heart. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.